2004 is extremely interesting because it um, uses the symphonia uh, as its symphonia, the, the first movement of Brandenburg III. But Bach, of course, in 1729, didn't have a copy of the Brandenburg concertos because he'd um, sent them off to Berlin. Uh -huh. So he was working from his draft score, which is lost now, but his draft score. So what he did was he got his um, pupil, one of his pupils, to write out all the string parts from his draft score. He did a few corrections, and then he wrote oboe parts, which largely reinforced the string parts, but occasionally have their own uh, interjections, and then completely new horn parts. So it's um, the sort of orchestration where you add something, like adding, a, adding an extra penthouse at the top of a block of flats or, or whatever. So uh, it's, a, it's an additive type of orchestration. <laughs> for Bach um, inserting a symphonia in the cantata because he does it sometimes with certain cantatas but not all of them. Absolutely, yes. Well, as you go into the later 1720s, he seems to do it more and more. Um, one possible reason is that he was uh, putting out feelers for the possibility of running the Collegium Musicum, the, the town uh, orchestra, really, one, one of the main forerunners of what is now the Leipzig Gewandhaus Orchestra. Um, and it was in 1729 that he finally achieved that and became director of the Collegium Musicum, around June, about the time this cantata was uh, written and performed. So uh, it seems almost certain that this cantata reflects the new musicians that Bach had available to him suddenly um, in the middle of 1729, and it's a way of celebrating that. <laughs> Cantata is, is based around uh, the gospel for the day, like many of the cantatas, gospel or epistle. It's usually, usually one of the set readings for the day. And this one is very clearly based around the John text about, for God loved the world, so loved the world that he gave his only son. So it's all about that, uh, although much of the text is, is about um, how we in turn love God and have to love God, and, and indeed why we love God, because uh, through that love and through faith, we get salvation. Uh, so, so it's sort of turned to a, a, a dogmatic theological message. Um, so I suppose you could say that the, the symphonia is, is uh, in some ways an, an epitomization of the um, riches that, that Bach had in Leipzig, the riches we have, uh, as if it were a sign of that, that um, providence, perhaps, that, that uh, both comes through the gospel, but also to Bach himself at this particular juncture in his career, uh, where he suddenly had um, at his disposal not just the town musicians, not just the school musicians, but now some of the university students and other semi-professionals and professionals who, who were living in Leipzig. <laughs> What's also very interesting about it is the fact that the string parts of the symphonia 
preserves the Brandenburg Concerto in the version it was before Bach finished the Brandenburg manuscript. So in other words, as Bach was writing the manuscript for the Margrave of Brandenburg, um, he improved, corrected, and changed things uh, in the way he always did. He, he couldn't copy anything out without changing things. <laughs> The Brandenburg Concertos, um, in some ways, you could say, are Bach's greatest achievement in the earlier part of his life, before coming to Leipzig. Um, you've also got the first book of the World Temple of Vienna, that's hard to beat. You've got the Weimar Cantatas. You've got many of the organ works. But still, um, they really do stick out, I think, as, as pieces which um, have a geniality to them and, a, and, a, and an accessibility to them, which, which really... Um, you could say in, in terms of uh, Bach's overall output, is, is almost unrivaled in his later years. 